It's time for our April plan with me. This month we'll do calendars, illustrations, and new spreads, all based on our daisy theme. Hey friends, what's up? Welcome back. My name is Shada and today we're getting into our April plan with me. I know a lot of you are excited for this one because the theme is daisies. I'm following the birth flowers this year in my planner and so happy birthday to all the daisies, all the April birthdays out there. And I know a lot of you are excited for this one so we will get into it in just a second. Um, I just wanted to take a sec because this is such a strange week um, with COVID-19 and everyone sort of self-quarantining and everything that's going on. Um, I know there's a lot of fear and anxiety and worse in your life right now. And I just wanted to say um, that I'm thinking of you and that I wanted to send a positive message and a hug from Canada and just be really kind to yourself when you can take time to be creative. Um, it can be a great uplifting part of the day, a little bit of self-care, something you could do indoors and do with your kids. And of course, you don't just have to watch this YouTube channel. There's lots of great YouTube channels out there and new skills to learn and kind of something to take your mind off it all. So yeah, even it doesn't have to be YouTube, a cup of tea, a little bit of FaceTime with a friend or a family member. Just make sure you're taking time for you and time to feel something good during the day because it's a bit of crazy days right now. <laughs> I think one thing I did want to mention is that I've noticed a few positive things that are happening, at least in my community. And one is definitely that it's opened up the conversation around mental health. I mean, everybody is talking about fear and anxiety and depression. And as someone who's always struggled with mental health, it's kind of nice uh, to see those conversations opening up. And hopefully when things get back to normal, that those conversations will continue and that'll be something good that came out of something that is obviously not good. Um, and I mean, I see a world that's unified through this, through this virus and as scary as things are right now, it's kind of beautiful that everybody's in this together. The whole world is in this together and everybody is self quarantining and everybody is taking precautions to, um, you know, protect our most vulnerable um, citizens. So it's just kind of, I kind of think there's something really nice about that. And I'm just trying to see the positive. I'm not saying that things are good right now, but those are just some things that I've been thinking about to kind of keep my spirits up. So I hope that uh, that you're okay and that your family's okay. And uh, yeah, let's get into our daisy themed plan with me. We're gonna do a whole bunch of stuff. I know you got some extra time this month, so we are doing all kinds of daisy illustrations and fun layouts. And one other thing, we are going to do an extra video for you next week. So right now we do a video every Tuesday and Friday. You can always count on that. But next week there will be a third video because I know we're gonna be a little squirrely. We're all a little bored already. Um, so we're not sure when it will be exactly, but follow me on Instagram at Shada Campbell or in the YouTube community tab. I post all kinds of random info there. So keep an eye out because there will be a live extra video with moi. Okay, let's get started on our April planner. Okay, grab your journal and a cup of tea or coffee, I guess, I guess coffee would be fine. Uh, this is my Baron Fig Confidant Notebook. Um, if you are interested in purchasing the same one, I have linked it in the description below. I love this journal. I just bought one at random in a stationery store a few years ago and fell in love. So uh, check them out. And uh, I will just give you a quick little tour here because a lot of you I know watch these videos and you don't create your own bullet journal. This is the perfect time to get started. You don't have to begin at the start of the year. All of this is documented in videos. So I'm going to link those videos as well so you can get set up if you like. This was our March cover page. We did daffodils. Um, it was a Dutch door as usual. Um, we did a dial calendar. Those are always fun. If 
a little labor intensive. And then we did this very intricate weekly spread, which I love doing. And I saw it recreated a lot online on Instagram and you guys did some really beautiful ones. I've got one more in there. And then um, if we flip over, I was kind of experimenting. This isn't finished, but I was just having a bit of fun in my journal. I was going to do a video of that, but it was like, it took way too long. Um, and then I will flip over to a fresh page here and we are going to do our April cover page, Dutch door as usual. So what I do is I mark in eight squares on two pages or any set number and daisies. So daisies, we are going to do this cute little backpack theme. Uh, these straw backpacks are so in. So in pencil at the bottom, you're just going to do a little rectangle and make it very perfectly imperfect. Do this little U-shaped handle and two straps, and you could put a little square for a buckle on each. And then that is so simple. And then we're just going to fill this straw trendy backpack with daisies and Daisies are your basic, you know, icon of a flower. You do a round stamen and then you do all these petals. And if it helps you do a little guide, you know, draw the circle first, so you know how large the flower is going to be and then draw the stamen and uh, then you're going to just do all the petals. And doing the guide can also help you to make the flowers a little more dynamic by shortening those front petals. You can make a flower that looks like it's blooming up and out. I'm also placing some some stems and some leaves and this design I think you can see it comes together pretty simply Next up, I want to add a little color, but before that, just a reminder that you can print my April cover page All the bonus content is available on my patreon site for a couple bucks a month Okay, so what I like to do is create a little color palette. This just helps you plan things out. I'm using my Faber-Castell markers. I have two colors of brown. I have this extremely light warm gray. It's almost an ivory. And as usual, I have my warm gray. Um, for the basket, you can kind of see what I'm going to do. I've got a couple greens for the flowers there, so I'm planning that out. Don't worry, all these color names and brands will be listed in the video description. It's just too annoying for me to, you know, blurt them all out. It's easier for you to read them. So check the description. We've got our colors sorted. And now I'm taking that extremely light warm gray and I am going to color in our straw backpack. You know, these wonderful straw bags that are so trendy. I'm sort of doing a crisscross so you get a bit of that woven um, texture. I mean, markers are great for that because they you do see how the marker goes down. You can use that to your advantage. Sometimes the streakiness can be good. And then I've used the lighter brown for the leather straps. And then if you want to be super extra, you can, you know, add a bit of darker brown, but really you only need one brown for this. You could add a bit of a shadow if you want. And then uh, I am taking the darker warm gray and I am adding a bit of that texture, textural element, just by doing a bit of a very loose, messy crisscross. I want to get that woven, um, that woven bag kind of look. So add a little of that in and um, yeah, uh, at this point we'll move up and we'll start doing the flowers. The thing is what you want to do is make sure you don't have too much pencil on there. So I erased a little and then I'm kind of just using my warm gray to, you know, outline some of the petals because obviously we're doing white daisies. So I'm doing a bit of shading. Like I might just add a bit of gray near the center of the flower, near the stamen. And then I'll come in with this um, yellow, this mustard color, and I'll add that to the center. This is a great marker color just because you don't have to use like a bright sunshine lemon yellow. You can use a color that's a little more muted, a little more sophisticated, <laughs> um, a little more my speed, not too bright. And uh, at any point you can use a fine liner like a Pigma Micron to start outlining the flowers. And my tip here would just be to make them very perfectly imperfect. You know, don't make those petals too pointy or too smooth. Make them a little rough, a little weird. And that's really where the daisies I think succeed is that they're all a little wonky and very perfectly imperfect. Let me take a moment to thank Skillshare for sponsoring our video today. Skillshare is an online learning community that offers membership with meaning. With so much to explore, real projects to create, and the support of fellow creatives, Skillshare empowers you to accomplish real growth. 
With Skillshare, you can learn just about anything from home and without spending a lot of money. An annual membership is less than 10 bucks a month, and there are so many classes that suit all of your interests. I'll tell you about a few of my favorites uh, at the end of today's video. If you'd like to try Skillshare, the first 500 people to click the link in the description will get two free months of premium membership. All right, I've added color to my daisies. I've also taken a light green and sort of filled in with lots of stems and messy leaves. And now I'm going over those stems and leaves with my Pigma Micron Fine Liner. I believe I use the O3 nib for almost everything. Here's how I did the leaves, just a little curving line and then all these tiny little broken lines. So they're sort of these raggedy little daisy leaves. And then you can go over them with Fine Liner if you like and then you can add some darker green if you like that as well. <laughs> um, yeah, I just thought the two greens together, it kind of it gives it a little bit more depth and it just adds a little something extra. But this illustration is quickly coming to an end. I decided, um, you can see the daisies are sort of, sort of comically weighted to the right. They're all sort of falling out of the basket that way. So in the end, I just added a couple more uh, sort of across that line. And then I will cut away my Dutch door. You just want to slip a cutting mat underneath the page um, and then use a ruler and a good paper knife to uh, cut around carefully. And I just freehand the uh, around the flowers. And then that is that. Our lovely Dutch door cover page is all done. And now we're going to work on the page below and kind of sort that out. We'll do some more daisy illustrations. We'll place a little calendar. I'm just going to block out in pencil exactly where I will place that calendar. Um, and then we'll do like a month title, however you like. I'm going to do mine in a really simple uppercase hand lettering. Okay, and then let's draw some black and white daisies because you know, enough enough with the color already. <laughs> I think we should do a fun pen illustration. So what I'm doing here is just a guide. Any illustration, I love to start with a guide. Put circles or ovals where you're going to place your flowers. That way when you finish them, you're not like, oh, that was totally in the wrong spot because that tends to happen. Working out a guide beforehand can also help you to create flowers that have a little more depth, that look like they're blooming, or that look like they're concave or convex. I will link some floral illustration videos where I talk more about that, but it's all about where you place that stamen and how short or long the petals are. Uh, so let's go over this in pen. This one, you can see the front petals are very short. The stamen is placed low in that circle, so it looks like the flower is concave and it's blooming sort of up and out. It's got a little depth. I'm doing these very perfectly imperfect petals. I go all the way around and then I end up going around again and I tuck more petals in the spaces between the first petals. So you get this really detailed, beautiful daisy and it's not difficult to illustrate, to draw. Like This is something you can totally do. Flowers are a great place to start if you're kind of learning to draw. Um, you'll see me do another one here. I've got the stamen placed a little bit low within the circle. So the front petals are a little shorter, makes it look like it's a concave flower, like the stamen is low. And then we do all those petals and then we go around and do another bunch of petals. And then I am doing all this line shading, just adding some lines on each petal to give them a bit of texture and a bit of shadow, a bit of depth. And uh, basically for the stamen in the center, I just scribble it in just to make it really dark and add that contrast. And then I've done the stems in pencil, so I just carefully go over them in pen. And then I'm doing some of those scraggly daisy leaves, just like we did on the cover page. And for them, I do a curving line and then just these pairs of messy little leaves. And that kind of gives the, the look of the daisy leaf. I'll continue to add line shading. If you want, you can switch your Pigma Micron. As I said, I'm using the O3 nib for almost everything, but if you want, you could switch to like the O1 for all the line shading, and that can be helpful to have those different size nibs, just makes things so precise. 
Now these daisies I'm quickly finishing, what I'll add to this piece to really make everything pop, and it's also super easy, is in pencil I'll just draw some like very basic leaves. You can see I've done some super tiny ones on the right here, and then on the left I'm going to do these slightly larger like pointed oval leaves. Very basic, but by adding those in behind we just get this daisy flower design that's a little more dynamic, it looks super detailed, but it wasn't hard to create. I'm going to place a little calendar off to the right here at the bottom. Um, yeah, just using my 01 nib for that. So use a small fine liner and keep those numbers nice and tiny. I'll use my warm gray, <laughs> as usual, to uh, highlight the days of the week. And then in pencil, I am writing April in like a very basic uppercase print. And then this is my very messy lazy girls block lettering. So all you do is basically go over every little piece of each letter twice. You can see me kind of doing everything twice and then I just color it in but very messy leaving a little white showing through and it's a great simple way to do block letters or kind of like a block letter <laughs> and then I don't know I just I strayed from my usual goals and focus that I usually put on this page um, and I just decided to put a quote um, and so I put live simply bloom wildly whatever that means <laughs> I was just kidding. Um, but if you wanted to do your goals in focus, you could totally make that design a little smaller and give yourself a bit of room. Let's flip over and keep on moving. We are going to do a simple calendar. And what I've done is just marked out a really basic grid in the center. It's a two by two um, square for this calendar. And I do it in pencil first. I'm kind of making it a little wonky, like not perfectly straight on purpose. And because I'm allergic to rulers, I just pull the pen towards my body to create that grid. Now I'm going to take my uh, small fine liner, just add all of those numbers in there. And this is just a really basic cutesy little calendar that I think looks really whimsical. And now we're going to do another daisy illustration. So come up about a square, draw a line. And then we're going to do this burst of flowers that goes up and out. So I've kind of marked out the space I want to fill. And then you're going to start drawing little simple daisies and you're going to fill in that whole area. You can add a few stems at the bottom and we just want this big burst up and out <laughs> of flowers. Uh, and then I'm using basically the same colors. I'm going to use that dark mustard yellow for all the stamens, use my warm gray to add just a hint of detail to some of those petals. Some of them you might leave completely white. You don't need to do gray on all of them. I don't think I mentioned that before, but that's definitely a choice that I made. And uh, yeah, just going over everything with my fine liner. This is not so different from the daisies that we just did on the cover page. So it's really fun, I think, when you're learning to draw and you kind of get the hang of one flower and then you can find different ways to draw it or different ways to work out that illustration, but it's all kind of on a theme. By the time you're done, you've got so much confidence, right? You've drawn daisies this way, and daisies that way. <laughs> um, and yes, I've done my <laughs> dark green uh, to kind of fill in and add a bit of contrast and that's that I love that whimsical little burst of flowers I'm gonna come down here to the bottom corner and just do like a messy splotch of color with my warm gray <laughs> and then I'll add the month title of April Oh guys, we still have so much to do. We are not slowing down. I know you don't have anywhere to be, so let's create another illustration. For this one, I have printed some, wait for it, warm gray color on uh, just computer paper. You could use any colored paper. I'm going to cut out like a little rectangle with rounded corners and then paste that in. And then for this illustration, you'll need a paint pen, something like this Sakura white pen touch uh, pen, but any sort of paint pen or gel pen will do. And what I'm doing is it really works well because this is a very big, thick marker. We're just going to do these messy petals. Some of them you can see are all equally sized. Other ones I'm doing like those very short front petals. I'm going to do some daisies kind of in profile where you're just seeing a little half circle of petals, but we are just getting very messy, very loose. The pen soaks into the paper a little bit, so I tended to go over these a bunch of times to get them really, really white, like maybe three or four layers of 
pen marker, whatever it is, paint marker. <laughs> and then uh, in pencil, uh, add in your stems so that you're happy with where they are all sitting. And then you can take that dark green marker. This is my Tombow brush pen. And we will add all of these nice dark green stems. This would also be a great piece to do in like blue and pink, you know, with the white petals, you could change up your color palette. I'm going to stay the same because hello, I'm boring. And once I choose one color, it's like, that's all I can do. <laughs> Afraid of color over here. And then once the illustration is complete, it's like super simple, very graphic. Uh, we can add a little quote if you like, and I am writing every day may not be good, but there is something good in every day. And that's definitely something that I'm focusing on right now. Comment below and let me know what are you doing right now to stay positive and keep busy and uh, be good to yourself. I would love to hear suggestions and I'm sure everyone would love to read them. Okay, so the last thing we are gonna do is a little weekly layout. This is one that I have done before. Uh, it incorporates an illustration in the center. You just basically block out these sections. I'm putting eight squares in between each line. We've got four lines on the left, three on the, or, whoops, that was backwards, three on the left-hand page. And then I am drawing some little circles because I still don't have my circle tracer and that's fine. You can freehand those little circles. Um, write the abbreviation of the weekday on the line. I'm just doing a really simple loose cursive. And uh, then carefully pull the pen towards your body to um, finish those lines. And then everything is just kind of divided nicely. This layout comes together really easily but it is nice and kind of separated. I like good separation for all my weekly to-do lists and notes and that sort of thing. I'll place a little calendar up top here. Um, and then once you've placed your calendar, just move over to the left, give yourself a little box. Uh, I just do the box or the rectangle and pencil. And then using a brush marker, you're just going to do these really simple uppercase letters. This is another great hack <laughs> for doing um, block letters. But then when you come back in with your fine liner, it's really easy to kind of trace those block letters. And if you find the this type of hand lettering hard to do, doing the marker first, it, it makes a great guide. And all of a sudden those block letters aren't quite as tricky. To complete the main setup, grab a white gel pen. I love the Uniball Signo, and you're just going to place the date in the black circle that you did. Okay, and then you've got this great space in the middle here for an illustration. I thought I'd grab a little bit of gray. We've got a dark warm gray and a light warm gray. And we're just going to draw some more daisies. But I wanted to share how I would do them sort of really quickly because you don't always have time to do um, an intricate illustration for every weekly layout of the month. Start with the darker color and you're just going to do a bit of a scribbly dotted area to form the stamen at the center of the daisy and then use the lighter color to make these scribbly messy petals. You can make all the petals the same size like I did for the first flower or you can change them up to make the daisies appear a little more concave or convex. I'm just going to scribble in a bunch of flowers here and uh, leave a little white space as well. A little negative space can make them look even more like daisies especially if you're working with gray like I am. Uh, and then you're going to come in with your fine liner. For this one, I am using the 05 nib Pigma Micron. I've linked all these supplies, don't forget, in the description below. So if you're looking for anything, um, the links are there for you. And we're just going to do like, again, a really messy, perfectly imperfect outline for these petals. Sometimes the marker doesn't line up with the pen. And I think that kind of looks cool. It looks very whimsical and free. And that's kind of just the thing you want in a planner. Take that pressure off yourself because this is just an illustration to inspire you for a couple days. So have fun with it. I use a little pencil to mark out where all my stems and leaves are going to go um, before going over them with the pen. Remember, all of these supplies are linked in the video description. So if you're wondering about the Pigma Microns or the markers or my journal, um, all the links are there for you. I'm going to finish this with just a little bit more marker and uh, that's pretty much it. Yet another daisy illustration all done. Um, I'll be using this weekly layout all month. It's really simple and I do like doing that kind of big illustration right in the center. Uh, 
Thank you guys so much for watching. I enjoyed making our usual Dutch door cover page. We did this other um, more intricate design underneath, a little simple calendar with lots of negative space and a big burst of flowers. And of course, our illustration just for fun. I really like the colored paper. It looks like a big splotch of paint almost on the page. So it has a great effect and is super simple. And then the weekly layout. Um, yeah, that's about it. Thank you guys. Uh, just a quick reminder, you can grab this weekly layout, the one you just saw me create, that will be available on Patreon. So head over there after the video and the um, cover page as well. You can always print that cover page. Thank you, friends. Take care of yourself. Take a little creative time. Take care of those around you and stay safe. I would like to thank Skillshare again for sponsoring today. Here are a few classes that I thought you might find interesting. One is all about modern floral arranging and oh, it's just such a beautiful course. I mean, look at the setting they're in. Everything is just so gorgeous. Uh, it would be great just to watch, just to get some ideas for painting flowers. But of course, if you're making your own floral arrangements, um, yeah, this one is just so on trend and so modern and so beautiful and everything about it is just romantic and they actually use that word. So I think if you're into this channel, this would be for you. And then this is another one that I um, was looking at taking myself potentially. It's titled Choose Must, 10 Hands-On Exercises to Find and Pursue Your Passion. And it's all about sort of listening to that central core of you and finding and developing your passion without fear or compromise. Um, so yes, if you would like to try two months of premium membership to Skillshare for free, uh, click the link in the video description below. Thank you guys again for watching and I will see you soon with a new video.